Tucked away in the scenic valleys of the southern Appalachian Mountains, you can find a type of agriculture which takes advantage of an abundant natural resource, water. The mountain ranges of the southeast are usually blessed with large amounts of rainfall, which produces the many clear, cold, fast-flowing streams of the area. Where suitable land is available, these streams can provide the necessary water for the production of salmonids. Most of the salmonids produced in the southeast are rainbow trout. However, there are a small number of brook trout, brown trout, coho salmon, and Atlantic salmon also grown in the area. Trout production in the southeast is concentrated in a crescent-shaped area that roughly follows the Appalachian Mountains. The streams here remain cool enough for trout in the summer, but don't freeze during most of the winter. About a quarter of the 60 to 65 million pounds of trout produced each year in the United States are grown here in the South. The leading trout producing states are North Carolina, Georgia, Virginia, Tennessee, and Kentucky. There are several components to a successful commercial trout operation. A dependable water supply with ample flow is the most important factor. Also, the water must have a suitable temperature, proper pH, and high levels of dissolved oxygen. A small trout farm for supplemental income should have a water flow of about 350 to 500 gallons per minute during minimum flow periods. A commercial trout farm requires at least 1,000 gallons of water flow per minute, or about 2 cubic feet per second. The best watersheds for trout farming are completely wooded, with little or no cropland. In areas where the watershed has been cleared, the stream channel should be shaded to avoid high temperatures during the summer. Ideal water temperatures for trout production are from 55 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Slightly cooler water is best for growing trout eggs or newly hatched fry. Temperature should not exceed 75 degrees Fahrenheit and only rarely exceed 70 degrees during years with average amounts of precipitation. The majority of trout farms in the south use surface water supplies which are very low in dissolved mineral content and tend to be slightly acidic. Trout are very tolerant of a wide range of dissolved mineral contents and in fact are grown in seawater where temperatures are favorable. Ideal water conditions for trout will have an alkalinity and hardness levels from 75 to 100 parts per million and pH values from 6.5 to 7.5. Waters with pH values above 7.5 will grow fewer trout because of the increased toxicity of dissolved unionized ammonia. In a few areas of Virginia, Kentucky, and Tennessee, large springs provide most of the water for trout production. These waters usually have an alkalinity and hardness above 100 parts per million and pH levels above 7.0. Trout production in more alkaline waters will depend on the pH and its effect on ammonia toxicity. The water that enters the trout farm should be saturated with oxygen. Oxygen levels are rarely a problem in trout farms using surface waters until after the water enters the system. On the other hand, spring or well water often contains lowered oxygen levels and excess dissolved carbon dioxide and nitrogen. These excess gases must be removed and oxygen added to the water before it's used to produce trout. Since most of the water suitable for trout production can also maintain wild populations of trout, their presence is one indicator of good water quality. The slope of a raceway site should be gentle enough for ease of access, yet provide a minimum fall of approximately three feet between raceways for aeration. On a typical trout farm, a four to 10% grade is suitable for raceway construction. On sites where the slope or area prohibits raceway construction, small earthen ponds or races are often constructed. These types of systems are more difficult to manage but can produce a good quality fish. The components of a typical trout farm 
include a water diversion or intake structure. The diversion for a trout farm is a low head dam with a lowered slot and attached collection box where the piping to the farm is housed. A perforated metal screen covers the collection area to prevent fish and debris from entering the system. Water entering the collection box through the screen is piped to the farm. Excess water flows over the screen to wash away debris. The water enters the trout farm in a small distribution area called a head box, which is kept free of fish. The water then flows by gravity through the remainder of the tanks on the farm. Fish are kept within each tank by screens placed at each end. These screens must be kept clean to allow free water flow. At the bottom of the raceways, there's an area for settling and removal of solid waste produced on the farm. This waste can be used as fertilizer on crops. In the south, growing trout usually begins with the purchase of trout eggs from a farm which specializes in their production. Most of these farms are located in the Pacific Northwest. Trout eggs are incubated by the supplier until the embryos have developed eye pigmentation and are hardy enough to withstand shipping. These are referred to as eyed eggs and will hatch in four to seven days depending on water temperature. Trout eggs are disinfected with an iodine solution and the temperature adjusted to match the hatchery temperature before they're put into an incubator such as this upwelling unit. Vertical tray incubators are also used. The hatching rates of trout eggs depend on water temperature, but will usually be completed within two to four days. The newly hatched trout, or sack fry, are kept in shallow water until they begin to swim up approximately two weeks after hatching. When most of the trout have begun to swim, they're ready to be fed a prepared trout diet called starter mash. This is a finely ground fish food containing about 50% protein. At this stage, the fish need to be fed as often as possible. Most hatcheries feed at least on an hourly basis. As the fish grow, the number of feedings per day can be reduced. When they grow to about two inches long, they still need to be fed four to five times per day. At about two to two and a half inches in length, the fish will weigh slightly over two grams each or about 200 to 250 fish per pound. These fingerling trout are then moved out of the hatchery and into the commercial production system. At this stage, the fingerling should be vaccinated for protection against enteric red mouth, a fish disease common to trout production. Once at the farm, trout need to be fed and cared for much like any other livestock. First, the fish must be stocked into the tanks or ponds at an appropriate density, so they'll have sufficient oxygen and plenty of room to grow. In order to stock the right number of fish into each tank, a trout farmer should have an idea of the carrying capacity. This carrying capacity is dependent on fish size and feeding rate, and on several water quality factors, such as oxygen content, temperature, water flow, and volume. A number of different formulas have been devised to calculate carrying capacities, taking into account oxygen consumption, rate of increase in fish length, water volume and temperature, feeding rates, and other factors. In general, trout farms are designed to completely exchange the water in each tank in six to ten minutes. With this rate of water exchange, trout farmers can stock and maintain trout at between four and seven pounds of fish per cubic foot of water volume. Dissolved oxygen, suspended solids, and unionized ammonia concentrations are the primary limiting factors on trout farms in the south. However, in the slightly acidic water of the southern Appalachians, ammonia levels are rarely a problem. Tank loading should be decreased when oxygen levels at the outflow remain below six parts per million. Every trout farm should have a dissolved oxygen meter to take these readings. During the production cycle, fish should be graded periodically to maintain uniform sizes. 
Trout are usually graded four times during the period from fingerling stocking, about three inches, until they reach a marketable size, usually 12 to 16 inches. The simplest graders are made of wooden frames that are as long as the raceway is wide and a little higher than the water is deep. Pieces of aluminum tubing, PVC pipe, or smooth wood are spaced at regular intervals across the frame. The grader is put into the top of the raceway and the fish are crowded down toward the tail screen. Fish that are too large to pass through the bars remain at the bottom of the tank. The smaller fish swim through the bars and remain in the same tank. This method works best with fish larger than two to three inches long. Grading smaller fish is not usually necessary and will be stressful for the fish. Earthen ponds provide much more of a challenge in managing fish populations than raceway systems. Most often, the fish are stocked into earthen ponds at four fish per pound or more and are not graded until harvested for market. The carrying capacity of an earthen pond can be estimated similarly to a raceway system if the water exchange rate is approximately 30 minutes or less. The carrying capacities of earthen ponds are best determined by measuring the oxygen content of the pond and outflow waters and maintaining good production records. Good nutrition is an important part of growing quality trout. Feed for fry and fingerlings should contain approximately 50% protein and 15% fat. Feed for larger fish should contain about 40% protein and 10% fat. The switch to the lower protein formulations usually occurs at the transition from a crumble feed to a pelleted ration, called a grow-out or production diet. Several brands of high-quality commercial trout feed are available in the southeast. The primary goals in feeding trout are to grow the fish as fast and efficiently as possible with the least degradation of water quality. The amount of feed a trout eats is dependent on water temperature and fish size. During normal production, trout should be fed every day. Due to higher metabolic rates, smaller fish need more feed relative to their body weight than do larger fish. Fish in warmer water need more feed than fish in cooler water. The minimum temperature for growth in trout is approximately 38 degrees Fahrenheit. Trout will require only a maintenance diet at these temperatures. The best water temperature range for growing trout is between 55 and 65 degrees Fahrenheit. In very warm water, above 68 degrees, a trout's digestive system doesn't utilize nutrients well and some of the food will not be fully digested. The best way to determine the correct amount and size of food for your trout is to use a published feeding chart, usually provided by the feed manufacturer. The chart should be used as a guide. It's important to remember that fish should be fed less than they will eat. Overfeeding should be avoided. To feed properly, you must know the number and size of your fish. Good growth records for trout on your farm can help to predict the growth rate expected during each season. The most common type of feeder used on commercial trout farms in the southeast is the demand feeder. It consists of a hopper for holding the feed pellets and a movable disc below the hopper opening which is attached to a pendulum extending to the water. Trout greater than five inches long are readily trained to feed themselves. With careful adjustment of the feeders, rapid weight gain and efficient feed utilization can be attained. There are several advantages to the demand feeder. They can eliminate the sharp oxygen decline which occurs just after hand feeding. Care must be taken to adjust the demand feeder properly to prevent overfeeding. Hand feeding can give the best food conversion rates but requires a greater amount of labor. When feeding by hand or with a mechanical system, the feed should be distributed throughout the pond, making sure that feed does not accumulate on the bottom. In concrete tanks, trout will feed on some of the pellets which fall to the bottom, but trout will rarely pick up pellets from the bottom of earthen ponds. A change in feeding behavior is one clue that there may be a problem with the trout, such as low oxygen levels, 
or the outbreak of a disease. Determine the cause of the problem quickly and take immediate action. At times, feeding should be restricted or stopped altogether, such as when water temperatures drop much below 40 degrees Fahrenheit or rise much above 68 degrees. Feeding rates should also be cut when the fish are sick. They should always be kept off feed for at least 24 hours before grading or transporting. If the fish are to be moved a long distance or are to be processed, they should be kept off feed for a minimum of three to four days, longer if temperatures are low. 12 to 14 months after hatching, the trout should be ready for market. At this time, they should weigh 12 ounces to one pound. For fish which are to be sold as fillets, usually part of a second growing season is required for them to reach processing size. About 70% of the trout produced in the South are sold to processors. These businesses prepare and sell the fish to brokers, distributors, food stores, and restaurants. Many of the remaining 30% of the trout are sold for stocking pay lakes, private recreational waters, or sold directly to the public. Like most fish, which are farm-raised, trout are transported live to the processing plant where they're kept in holding tanks. Once at the plant, the trout are quickly processed. If you're thinking about trout farming, consider the following economic requirements. Depending on the size of the system, a typical trout farm will cost from 65 to 75 cents per pound of annual fish production to build. This does not include the price of the land. Construction or establishment costs are normally amortized over the approximate life of the farm, about 20 years. The cost of producing trout, including amateurized construction costs, will range from 82 cents to over a dollar per pound of fish, depending on feed costs, interest rates, and other factors. Trout production can be a profitable form of farming if the operation is well planned and well managed. It's important to check the market potential for trout in your area before making a major commitment. Also, be aware of environmental or regulatory constraints in your state which may affect trout farming. A good place to start is by talking with other producers or processors in your area.